Hi there, and welcome to Wade's Workshop. In this episode, we're going to be making a protector for the plate and the register on the headstock on the Warco WM180 lathe. Let me show you what I mean. So this part of the lathe, without the chuck on it, is a critical part in that it has a register which runs true to the diameter or to the centre of the lathe and is quite accurately ground. Now, the three-jaw chuck, four-jaw chuck, face plates, all those sorts of things, pick up on that register and that locates them accurately on the headstock. And on this particular lathe, they fit really well and run really nicely. So, I want to protect this area. Now, when it's got a chuck on it, the three, four-jaw chuck, face plates, that sort of thing, it's all covered up and protected from swarf wraparounds and all that sort of thing because it's sandwiched, you know, completely away from harm's way. However, quite regularly, as you'll see me do, a little spider coming down on my leg, I'll have the chuck up in my headstock, you know, the, the, uh, the chuck, sometimes it'll be uh, an ER32 collet chuck, that sort of thing, and when I'm using these, this area of the headstock is open to damage. So all I'm looking to do is to cover this up with a hole in the centre so that I can still use the uh, the arbors and what have you when I'm not you you know when they're um, when I need to but so that this area is protected now the overall diameter of this is a hundred millimeters so ideally I'd have a piece of aluminium perhaps you know 10 15 mil thick a hundred millimeters in diameter or just over maybe a piece of four inch aluminium and I would machine up a protector that picks up on the three holes will bolt on with the step for the register perhaps a, a slightly larger clearance hole for the center there that I could put on there and use while I'm using the you know these types of uh, chucks and, and collets I use as well that fit in the MT3 in the spindle I haven't got a piece of aluminium that big um, but what I have got is a plastic chopping board Again, it's about 9 mil thick, so that shouldn't cause too many problems, especially I'm just looking. I'm going to have to machine it down a bit, but it will be machined down a bit so that the, uh, the register of this particular chuck will fit. So I've got to reduce this by about a millimetre. So I'm going to cut myself out a piece of this, you know, about 105 mil diameter, something like that. Just roughly mark it out and chop it off with a hacksaw, and we'll get it up in a three-jaw chuck and start and do some machining. So just one further note, I know I'm looking for a diameter of 100mm. The register here is 72mm, or if I bore out a little register in, in, the, in the plastic, 72, 72 and a quarter millimetres, you know, 72.25. And it's measuring up a 3.2 step, so I'll try and keep to that sort of step height. And again, it has three holes on a PCD, and the PCD of the holes on this particular head is 84mm PCD. So I need to get this information because I'm going to be putting the chuck on and then once the chuck's on I can't get the information that I need to make the part. So 172, 3.2 step in my case and it's an 84 PCD with three equispaced holes. So I can put my three jaw chuck up and we'll start making this protector. I'm sure I said three jaw then. I tried it in the three jaw and it wouldn't safely open up big enough to grab um, you know this which is sort of 105 mil something like that so I've gone back to four jaw and that holds it on the outside jaw is fine so I'm just I center dotted the plastic drew myself a circle hacksawed it off on four corners knocked the corners off it you know to take the worst of the material out and I'm only interested in doing this face at the moment in fact I'm gonna have to bring it out of the jaws a little bit just to give me a little bit to machine off in fact there is about a millimetre stuck out all round, so I think I'll be alright with it hard back against the jaws. But I just want to clock up the centre pump, so we'll get on and do that. I know it's a bit tricky for you to see, but I've just brought my centre in, and I'm just lining up that centre punch by eye, as it's not fussy, I've got material on the outside. So I'm just going round the four jaws now, just tightening up on the plastic. I can't go mad on the tightening here, because it is just a piece of plastic, it's not very thick. It is back against the jaws. And um, if I bring that out of the way, I mean that centre punch that I put in there originally is tidy now. The other problem I've got, um, I've just done this. 
I've got very little clearance, well in fact none, between my carriage stop here and the outside edge of the jaws. So just to do a bit of idiot prevention for myself, I've set my carriage stop here and just made sure so I can come as far as there and I'm not going to go banging into or crashing into any uh, objects below so to speak because the jaws are stuck out you know a good way they're in you know more than far enough but it's just uh, idiot proofing myself shall I call it <laughs> so I think the first thing I'm going to do I've decided on the, the hole through the center is going to be 22 mil uh, which is more than big enough it's the size of the tunnel in the lathe so I'm just going to drill a hole through the centre and I have got various drills I should be able to go straight into this plastic with a, maybe a 21 and then I'll just bore it to 22 so next up 21 mil drill well I chickened out I was going to go straight in with a 21 mil and then decided that uh, it could well pull that out of the chuck with the uh, the way it screws in with it being so soft so I'm going for a 14 mil drill first so <laughs> Chicken, I hear you shout. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, this is going to fly through here, so I'm just going to be gentle. Yeah, the way that's flying through, I probably could have done it, but uh, ah well, I chickened out. Sometimes you've got to be kind to things. <laughs> Keep saying that to the missus, but... Uh... <laughs> no, I'm not going to go there. Anyway. <laughs> uh, on the grounds that I'll get myself into trouble. Anyway. Oh, I don't think that drill is back in the... Now it is. So this is, uh, these are the MT2 drills that I've got. I'll show you the set of these. Uh, I think I've shown them before. I was looking for a, a 22 millimeter MT2 drill for a particular job. And it worked out sort of <laughs> buying one-offs like that. I mean, it was about 18 pound with a delivery, something like that, for me to get one. Uh, that was a 20, it was actually a 22, I believe. So anyway, I was sort of searching about and I came across a set from 14 and a half to 23. I think it goes 14 and a half, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and then up to the 23 mil. But I think I bought the whole set for like 23 pounds and another sort of five pound delivery. So yeah, it meant I got a whole set for, you know, seven or eight quid more than I was going to pay for just one drill. So yeah, I'll show you that set. So yeah, it all arrived in a nice aluminium storage case um, and the full set of drills all bagged up. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. I've used them loads. And as you can see, from 14 and a half up to 23 mil. So yeah, I think for the price, it was great. And they live in the case. I put them all back. I always put them back in their bags, clean them off. And I know where they are, where they are when I want them. And they're all on an MT2 shank. Okay, so... I think I want to go as fast as I dare go. Which seems alright. Um, just get a touch off. I've got about a mill sticking out of the jaws, so I've got a lot to play with. Okay. Yeah, it's not cleaned up on that, but. Uh, Just see where that is. Yeah, it's just touching in a few areas. I think where it's probably distorted a bit where the four jaws have come in, but uh, it shouldn't release the tension because I'm only taking a little bit. I'm hoping I can get a clean up. I think I'm nearly there already. Just the outer edges that need cleaning up.
nasty stringy stuff. I think it's uh, that HDPE, is it called? Um, I think that's what it's made of. Again, it was a Lidl's purchase, a couple of cheap chopping boards. Uh, can't tell where I've placed them, where I haven't. <laughs> so my service finish is as good as Lidl's chopping board. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to go a little bit faster, and I'm going to take another few flour off there, I think. Okay, this should be it. Yeah, I think me thinking I hadn't cleaned it up was just the intermittent where it's not a circle. I haven't mentioned, but I'm going to turn the outside of this once I've fitted it. Um, I'm going to screw it in place and then turn the outside after it's been fitted. So I'm not worried about being able to grab the outside at a later date. So all I'm interested in at the moment is all these hairy bits going on on here. Anyway, so I've got a flat surface there. So I think it's a boring bar job next to do the register and uh, bore that out. So we shall do that next. Now I'm going to have to be really gentle when I do it because I'm going to be taking a bit of the strength out of the middle of this. And because I'm only gripping it on the outside, I think we'll be all right because I'm gripping on... Well, pretty much all the material that I've got there. I think we'll be all right, as long as I take it easy. So I got my 12 mil boring bar up. I'll just touch off in there. There. I think I'll take about 0.2 aside. And just speed through there by hand. It's not making any noise at all when it's getting this stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to have a measure. Let me just set my DRO to zero. And I'm looking for 22 mil. I mean, I'm not dead fussy on this. 21.8. Okay. Um, ooh. I'm actually wrong. I'm actually wrong there. Even though my tunnel is 22 mil. The Morse taper on the end is larger. So I'll have a rethink and see what size I actually want that hole. So I've just pulled out one of my uh, two to three adapters and I can see the witness mark where it sits. And I only ever use this in this uh, three mil. And it's sitting at 23.7, something like that. You know, just a, a rough as I say. So if I do it 25 mil, nice round figure through the bore. So, where was I again? <laughs> 21.8. So, I want 3.2 mil out of there. So, that's going to be 1.6 mil aside. I tell you what, I'm feeling brave. I'm going to take it all in one go. Tastes like butter, this stuff. Go. Ugh, look at all that. We love that out the way. So where are we? 25.08. We'll live with that. So next procedure, I'll probably use exactly the same tool, and it's to turn the register. So I'm going to set a zero there, so I know I'm on 25 diameter as I stand. And I'm looking for, I did write it down, just over 72. I suppose that's one of the drawbacks of this type of DRO. So like one where you could put, uh, put a figure in. I mean, okay, it, it works two to one on here, but you know, if I measured that up at like 25.07, I could put a reading in at that position of like... Uh, 12 point, what is it, 12.5, uh, 12.53, something like that. And as I wound it out, I would know then when I got to half of my figure, 72, when I got to 36, that was pretty much my reading. Um, you know, I would stop a bit short, but 
anyway I'm going to have to do the maths in my head as we go along so um, we're on 25 at the moment with the DRO on zero so I'm just going to touch the face there give myself a zero again I think we'll take a mill at a time there so 25 so if I take 10 aside from where I am that'll be 45 if I take 20 aside that'll be 65 so I can come out to 20 on my DRO and that should give me 65 diameter I mean it's so soft this stuff I think we'll rough it out there at 20. There we are, there's step one. We'll clear that swarf before it goes flying all over the place. Is it swarf? <laughs> I don't know if it is. Okay. So 65, and I'm going to be ending up. I'm going to do it to 3 mil deep first. So I'll go in, take another mil. There we go. There's 20 again, get rid of that lot. Still dangerous, you know, if it catches and you've got your fingers in it, so make sure you're well away if you're ever grabbing swarf, even though the swarf isn't sharp. If it grabbed and pulled, um, you know, it's still tough stuff. So I'm going to go into 3 mil deep now. Whoop, not 3.2, that's my finished depth. 3 mil. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, well back out the way and I feel quite confident I can pull it with my fingers. But yeah, not good practice. So let me just check idiot proof myself. It should be about 65. 65.03. Right, okay. So from 65, I can go another two and a half would be 70 be another three and a half to give me 72 so I'm gonna go another three mil so 23 I'll go 22 first into my three mil depth and get rid of that And then I'll go to 23 on my DRO. Again to my 3 mil depth. I'm sort of treating it as if, as if it was steel. So that should be a diameter about half mil under size. 71.25 so I'm going to say go another point four aside and we'll be just over the 72 so I'll set a zero and I'm going to go point four I wonder if I can go a bit faster yeah into my three There. Ugh, dear me, stringy, horrible stuff. That should now be just over 72 mil. 72.1. I think that we're going to call that happy days. We call everything happy days. <laughs> right, so I'll put a zero on my DRO. Back into the middle. Go to the 3.2. I think I'll probably lock my carriage this time. Where's my spanner? Right, 2.7. 3.2. Lock the carriage. Okay. So we'll bring this out to the zero now.
and I'm just going to go point right into the corner to take the corner off and get out of it. Okay, so that should be 3.2 deep and 72 point, what did they say it was? Seventy-two point one two is showing me. Right, okay, we'll we'll live with that. Um, I just want to break that edge. Although there is a slight undercut on the register, but I will break that edge so that uh, any burrs in the future uh, won't cause too many issues. See? Yeah, that's chamfered in there. So the next thing I want to do is give myself a mark um, on the position of the, what was the PCD? 84. So how am I going to do that, I wonder? So what I've done is just angled my tool round so that the point, or the V of the point of the tool, is facing into the, uh, the workpiece. And I've lined up the very point on this register by eye you know I'm probably you know if I'm point two out I'll be surprised but I'm not that worried because if there's going to be pl there's plenty of room in the bolt holes in the headstock so if I just line that up that's there so that's 72 diameter and I'm looking for a PCD of 84 so that's 12 mil bigger so if I wind out six mil from there on my DRO and I'm just going to give myself a line. There we go. And that line, just do an idiot check, is coming out at 84.1. Happy with that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get, put a centre pop anywhere on here now. And then I'll get my divider so I can even use the calipers. In fact, I dare say I could work out what the distance is between each hole. But I'll basically have a centre pop, scribe a couple of lines, boop, boop, then check that the centres of the other two are the same, boop, boop. When they are, centre pop the other two, and I'll drill them through on my drill. I don't know how well they show up, but I have got my three holes in there. Um, yeah, you can do it with the dividers. Just basically trial and error until you get the two cross lines come together. But there is a formula. Um, I've got the old Zeus book here, pretty much everything you want to know in there. And you've got coordinates for equally spaced holes. Right. Well, I'm looking at three holes. See if I can get you in a bit closer. Okay. Now, it's all relative to the diameter of the PCD, the pitch circle diameter. So if I look at the distance here, C, the distance between two holes, yeah, gives me a reading of 0 0.86603. So, how well does this show? I don't know. Oh, bear with me, it's all switched off. I'm going to show my passcode. <laughs> right. Oh, let's come out again. So, 0 0.86603, was it? 86603. No. 0 0.86603 multiplied by the PCD in this case was uh, 84 equals 72.74 millimeters in this case so if we're on 72.4 millimeters I simply set my calipers to 72.4 popped one hole in scribed the other two out and yeah, I mean they all they all fit in. So happy days with that. Um, and that you know that shows you multiples. It could be you know there's loads of them, um, which shows you all the distances and what have you. So if you were jig boring on a milling machine, you could plot the coordinates without having to have in, have a a fancy D DRO which will you know give you multiple holes and what have you. The charts are there in the Zeus book and they're available online and they're in machinery's handbook. They're everywhere. 
but yeah i mean these these books i swear by them because they're handy they you know they can stick in the top of your toolbox and you're not messing about stinking up your machinery's handbook and you know you're not having to mess up your computer looking for the stuff it's there to hand the slight problem i have is the studs are m8 um, which you know the studs would normally if this was treated like a chuck the studs would screw into here Pass through the back plate with a nut on the back now this stuff you know it's not very thick an m8 thread in there as i was doing up the nuts on the back over time i'm going to rip them out from there um, so i want something a bit more substantial so my thinking is if i get some of these well coach bolts we call them they got the square underside whatever but they've already half the job's done for me in fact this is an m8 one the right size it's the only one i've got left here and it's part of my milling fixtures it lives in that box so, yeah, I'm going to town this afternoon. I'll just pick up a bag of these. Um, so the plan being, drill and tap M8 in there. And then get a bag of these. They don't have to be that long, obviously. I'll skim off the square on the underneath. And then run a die down so that the thread runs right to the underneath. And then I can screw these in from the back in here. Put a pair of lock nuts on this side and screw them in hard against the... Uh, the front base um, with the thread and the head when i'm pulling them back with a with a nut behind the back plate they shouldn't pull through and it should last some time so yeah i gotta get a packet of those but in the meantime i'll probably just use some studs for now so i can carry on with the project and uh, so i'm going to drill these out 6.8 for m8 so drill them and tap them and i'll probably salvage some studs out of my uh i don't know out of my one of my backing plates or what have you just in the temporary measure to get the outside machined So I've just borrowed three studs out of my uh, face plate actually and oh happy days yeah I mean obviously I don't want to put nets on the front edge with those proper bolts it would be a lot better so I'll fasten that up now and then we can get machine the OD as you can see I can't get that close to the head when I'm machining all the way back here. Obviously, you're never machining that far back. You're normally machining in this area here. So what I've done, just for a giggle, is I put my boring bar in, in the boring bar holder, upside down. And if I run the lathe in reverse, I can then machine all the way out there. <laughs> yeah, a bit of uh, jiggery and pokery was involved with this one. I could swivel the tailstock round and bring it right back. I mean, there's several ways I could do it. But, yeah, I thought I could show you this. Um, it just gives you extra reach in that way. Um, so I'm going to have to be very careful here because I do not want to touch this at all. Um, I might even put a bit of insulation tape around it, but, you know, just to, as a safeguard. But... Yeah, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to be very careful. So anyway, lathe in reverse. Just, uh, <laughs> just spin it up. Make sure we're not bowling anything. We'll just take the high points off first, if there are any. Now, I've only nipped up the nits. <laughs> nipped up the nits. Nipped up the nuts on the back. But yeah, this is uh, different. I mean, it's exactly the same principle as the upside down part in tool trick that you can do. I'm just going to skim down the OD. I mean, it is very soft, so the fact that my boring bar is stuck out uh, probably. Uh, I don't know, 70 mil, something like that. Isn't it a great worry? But yes, when you first do this, it feels very strange indeed. I've done it various times over the years for different products. But sometimes needs must and you find a way. Anyway, I'll bring you back when I'm done. 
I've just flicked the tool around the other way for safety's sake because I'm back here and now running in forward just slow it down a touch and I'm using my boring bar as a tool rest and I'll find a better edge that's the best of edge and we've just put a 45 degree on the corner by hand there we are in fact I could do one in that bore as well I'm being very careful because I've got the stud sticking out here there we go well there we are other than replacing these studs with those uh, those coach bolts as I said earlier we now have a protector for the register and face and that sits in there beautifully okay so I managed to get to the shop bought a packet of four of these with nuts as well but I didn't need the nuts um, skimmed them down skimmed the square head off um, run a thread up them and I've actually because they looked a bit chunky on there I've just reduced the head size thinned them down put a radius on them and the job is finished well, here we are guys again that was a bit of fun simple cheap out of a bit of a chopping board but I can rest assured now that I'm not going to damage the uh, the register and the head when I'm using stuff in the morse taper or the headstock happy days thanks for subscribing guys thanks for watching we'll see you all soon cheers now